Good morning, everybody. Welcome to week two. This is a uh, screencast of the lesson that we're going to be teaching in vocabulary to introduce the Vietnam War. So we're going to learn about the Vietnam War, Vietnam itself and its history during French colonialism and the Vietnam War. And then we're going to learn about the historical changes in Vietnam through maps through a short video. Then um, as far as the language goals, you're going to learn these new terms. I'm not going to read them all, but um, we're going to go through them here in a second. So then we're going to read and discuss about Vietnam as a French colony. The Vietnam War vocabulary, we're going to split into two parts. And today I'm just going to be telling you about part one. So in Vietnam, um, you can see a picture down here where this cursor is of Ho Chi Minh. And Ho Chi Minh was a nationalist Vietnamese person who was well educated and he um, wanted to form a, he did form a resistance movement called the Viet Minh. And he fought against people who had invaded his country. And at first it was the Japanese and then it was the French and then later it was the United States. And resistance means that they refused to accept the fact that they were being invaded and taken over by these foreign countries. His movement was a nationalist movement, meaning that the nation of Vietnam, which is a group of people united by culture that have the determination to rule themselves, um, nationalism in the case of Vietnam meant trying to be able to rule themselves and not have foreign powers rule them. Capitalism was a system that was in Vietnam during the French era. And many Vietnamese actually thrived in capitalism too, but many did not. Many were poor. Um, so with capitalism, you get rich and poor. You don't get everyone the same. It's an economic system like we have in the United States where people own their own businesses, um, they're free to try to sell things at, you know, and the market dictates the prices called the free market. So capitalism is different than communism. You can see in capitalism, here's some characteristics. The individual, um, some people say is the most important. Goods belong to the individual. People have private property. They have private businesses. They buy stocks. Um, you know, you work at a job for somebody who owns a company um, in the private sector usually, although there are public jobs in the United States too. So we're not totally capitalist. We have some forms of socialism as well. But overall capitalism is trying to you know, sell things and make profit. There's different perspectives in Vietnam um, and we're gonna learn about those. We're gonna learn about perspectives that the Vietnamese had themselves. Um, there are lots of different ones. We're gonna divide it into two main ones, the people in the North and the people in the South. But even within those groups, there were different perspectives, in other words, points of view of how Vietnam should be ruled. So the Vietnamese point of view um, could be broken down into a couple, but it was definitely different than the French point of view. And you're going to learn about that in the reading that we do this week and some videos we see as well. Pacification, the act of making peace, to make peace, to calm things down. Um, pacification, I mean, we can relate to that right now here in Minnesota. Um, you know, things have been really tense and there's a reason for that. And there was a reason for things to be really tense in Vietnam too. And so the French tried to do something called pacification, <clears throat> excuse me, which was to try to get the people to like them by doing nice things for them. So we'll learn about that. Um, the pacification program worked for some, but as you can see from this term here, it didn't work for a lot of people. So the Vietnamese, they didn't have the weaponry to fight head to head against the French, kind of like what we learned about in Africa, actually exactly like what we learned about in Africa. So many groups had to fight guerrilla war and this is what happened in Vietnam. So um, guerrilla war was like sneak attacks, some tunnels that you can see here, um, you know, hit and run tactics blowing up buildings, um, destroying infrastructure. Sometimes today we would call some of that stuff terrorism, you know, but it's just a matter of judgment. Um, it's in a war. They call that kind of stuff guerrilla war. So small groups of fighters who use creative strategies to fight all these things that you see here. 
Now, communism is something that um, eventually is the thing that Ho Chi Minh wants. Um, he started out as a nationalist, like just wanting freedom, but he also learned when he went to school in different parts of the world, including in Russia, um, that he thought communism might be a good thing for his country because there were so many people that were taken advantage by the French and there were some Vietnamese who were rich and there were many who were poor. So he's like, if we bring communism there, everyone will share the resources. What's interesting about Vietnam today is um, they still have a communist government, but now they're back to a lot of capitalism. So even though they fought hard to get communism into their country, um, they have loosened up on that a lot in modern day times. And now um, they're more capitalist than communist. So this is a political system in which the businesses are owned by the government. The government decides like how much of everything will be made, what the price will be, how much everyone gets paid, which theoretically is the same. So that's communism. And um, some people like the Hmong did not want communism. They knew they didn't want that. And so they fought on the side of the United States, as you're going to learn, against the North Vietnamese to, and against the Lao government to try to keep communism from coming to their country. So communism, the government is most important, or some would say even the people are most important um, and that they want to share everything and the goods belong to the government or to the people. And um, the individual needs are not as important as the communal needs or the common needs. All right, that's the end of it. And we'll do vocab part two um, uh, later in the week.